first of all, I think we all know that base oils are absolutely essential for engine oil. Goes without saying. Base oils bring essential characteristics to the engine oil formulation, such as oxidation resistance of today's more highly paraffinic group two and group three base oil. In balance, however, that same higher paraffinic content may also bring greater tendency to form gelation at lower temperatures because of such paraffinic contact. So simply stated, formulation with available base oils and additives to make desirable engine oils is a matter of understanding the qualities required of an engine oil from modern engines, formulating base oils and additives to produce these valuable properties, and consistently assuring by accepted tests that the finished engine oil is an acceptable product when it's marketed. With increasingly rapid engine design changes, the critical role of the stocks and their formulations to meet the needs of these modern engines is more and more a matter of technical knowledge coupled with close attention. And I see there's a question mark. This, this is the previous presentation. Okay, with, with close attention uh, to the vagaries, the changes that can occur in formulating an oil. Analysis of information on the in the Iowa database provides interesting insights regarding quality, of course. And for this presentation. One universal quality characteristic of engine oils, oxidation resistance, was chosen to determine how that quality changed from 2001 to 2010 in the Asian Pacific engine oils collected. A total of 300 engine oil samples were collected from 11 countries in the Asian Pacific region, and these countries are, as you see. The bench test method for comparing the oxidation resistance of these engine oils was the Thermal Oxidation Engine Oil Simulation Test, ASTMD 7097, used to simulate deposit formation in a critical area, that is the piston rain belt area, at 285 degrees Celsius. So what I've done here is to show the oxidation, the percentage of oils that met these levels of deposit. And you can see that I've given certain divisions of 50%, 75%, 90%, indicating the number of oils equal to or less than that that met the standard, that the value, deposit value that you see here. So oxidation deposit values are shown at these levels, these percentile levels. And in this case, 50% of the oils <coughs> deposit 35 milligrams or less. 75% of these oils deposit 47 milligrams or less, and 90% of the oils deposit 53 milligrams or less. In 2004, from the Iowa database for the Asia Pacific engine oils, they showed a considerable overall loss of oxidation resistance. In comparison to the prior data on the oils collected in 2001, both Values at 50% of the total oils have risen from 35 milligrams to 43 milligrams. 75% of the total oils, the tobacco level has risen from 47 to 57 milligrams, while at 90% of the total oils, deposit level has changed from 53 to 71 to 72 milligrams. This is a substantial loss in oxidation resistance for the 300 total oils collected in 2004. A note that whether this loss reflects differences in the brands of oils collected or an overall shift in oxidation resistance is moved. It's not something that can be said at this point, and there will be efforts to get some consistency in the oils collected to make sure that we are looking directly at oxidation change. Well, we'll all have uh, some observations and conclusions. 
The importance of providing base oils and resultant engine oils of quality and dependability is quicker, but highly dependent on establishing practices of uh, production and packaging that are intelligently guided for the system. Beyond this, and other growing product production practices, however, is the need to establish mutually agreed specifications for quality engine oils, specifications based on knowledge of engine, engine oil dynamics. The Institute of Material Oxidation Data was used as an example of the value of such analysis in improving understanding and response to market opportunities. And there are market opportunities for this kind of data. In general, it is evident that the rapidly growing market for automotive vehicles and their vehicles will likely require a higher level of cooperation and commitment by those manufacturing and marketing engines. It would seem as though the time has come in the age of the Pacific region such efforts to improve the quality and consistency of an important valuable commodity. Thank you for your time and attention. Are there any questions?